Hello, my name is Mark Dawling and I'm the Digital Schoolhouse Coordinator here at Langley Grammar School. This short video is an introduction to Scratch. I guess the challenge for us teachers is to focus on the teaching of computer science and the creativity as quickly as possible, rather than focusing on the teaching of the application called Scratch. And in the next few minutes, we're going to hopefully share with you some of the techniques that we use in the Digital Schoolhouse that we've found to work quite well. So we begin by asking the children, how many of them have been to the theatre? Many hands in the classroom will go up. I ask them, whereabouts do they sit? And invariably they will say, in front of the stage, in the audience. So I then play this short sequence of instructions and ask the children what part of the scratch screen they think matches or mirrors the stage and they will invariably say this area here. I then ask the children how many of them have been in a school production or school play. Again most hands will go up. I then ask the children where do they stand whilst they're waiting to go onto the stage and they will say backstage and I will ask the children what sorts of things get stored backstage. The children will say props and characters. So I ask the children what part of the scratch screen do they think stores the props and the characters? Now for the purposes of this video I've just left this screen you know as you would find it when you load scratch but you could if you wanted to add some extra characters to the screen. So you can see more props and more characters. The children will say that this is the area that is the backstage. I will then say to the children, what do they have or what do they receive that helps them to know when or when not, more importantly, to go on the stage? And they will say that they often get a script. So I ask the children, can they see the word script? anywhere on the page and they will say it's in this area here. Now at this point you need to relate the scratch game to something they're used to doing in the classroom. So for example many children will do worksheets and they will have a word bank at the top of the page or the bottom of the page to help them fill in the gaps or keywords that they would like them to use when writing something. So relate this area here to that word bank that they would use in the classroom. Now once we've done that we then ask the children whether they just have characters and props on the stage. The children will say no, that when setting the scene you have to have scenery. So I ask them whereabouts can you see scenery or stage and they will click or say this area here, which then allows us to go to backgrounds and we can import an image, like so, of the desert. I ask the children, does the scenery always stay the same in a theatre? And they say, well, no, sometimes you might want to change the scenery to add effect. So we can import a second scenery, so now we're at the beach. We then go to scripts, and the scripts are really for the backstage staff to know when to change the scenery, so usually at the half-time interval. So what we can do is say start, wait, and imagine our entire length of our play is 10 seconds, so we'll say 5 seconds, because that would be half-time, and then we can change the, the stage and then one, two, three, four, five and it goes to the white one because obviously we had three sceneries here. We can do the same sort of thing with sound not only the scenery. So for example if it was a cold windy night and the character was meant to be scared you could encourage the children to import a sound which um, 
included effects and it could be door close god that was scary press ok we're going to delete the pop and now when this scenery changes we're going to play the sound of the door closing Excellent. Now, we don't just have to have scripts and instructions for the backstage people. The most important people to have scripts are guests in a play are the actors or the actresses. So if we select one of the characters, um, we can obviously talk about the scripts. I ask the children, looking up here at the categories for the instructions, which ones do you think would make them move? Which ones do you think would make them talk? Which ones would make, would make them maybe answer or ask a question. So for example we're going to add a flag, we're going to move a few steps, we're then going to say hello and then after all of that happening we would like them to disappear off the stage and hide. So like the fairy godmother introduces Peter Pan and then disappears. So now it says hello and disappears. Excellent. Now the final thing we're going to talk to talk to you about is costumes. So obviously we can say to the children, do they wear the same costume throughout the whole play? And the answer is no. So if we click on costumes for a given character, so for example scratch costumes, notice that if I flick between the two, it makes him look like he's walking. So now what we can do is introduce a very simple loop and we're going to wait one second there we are and then we're going to show one character we want to change to next costume, there we are and then we want the fairy godmother to come back. There we are. Okay. So press the green flag. She says hello and then disappears. But notice this time she's come back. And then Scratch starts to walk. We can do the same for Scratch with the sounds. So we can import a sound. We can go to animals. And we want a kitty or kitten. That'll do. So at the end of Meow, there we are. Kitty, we can then play the sound, which is meow. Let's play at every point. There we are. Excellent. So hopefully that's given you a brief taste um, an understanding of how we introduce Scratch and computer science and creativity into our classroom. Notice that the way that we introduce this is by tapping into the children's real world understanding. And in doing so, it saves us time with learning the application, although Scratch is incredibly easy to learn. And it encourages the children to focus on the principles and concepts and most importantly, it helps them to plan their work. For example, one of the activities we do is get the children to plan a sequence of dance moves to whatever dance craze they're into at the time. By doing this and performing the uh, routine, they are planning a sequence of instructions and we get them to do this by flow diagrams and sometimes we get them to actually take pictures of themselves in different dance routines, print them out, put them into a specific order so that it helps them get the idea of planning. Once they've done that and they've planned it and they've performed it, we then get them to come into Scratch and then produce it in Scratch. And we have some really nice videos on dance and computer science on our website. 
If you want to find out more about the Digital Scorehouse and the resources that we have to share, and there's about two or three hundred resources on there for relating to computer science and ICT, and all different subjects like art and dance and science and history and geography, etc. Then the website address is www.digitalschoolhouse.org.uk. So let's make sure that we have lots of fun and creativity in the classroom and hopefully inspire the next generation of computer scientists. Thanks, bye.